do I regret getting the 2023 Toyota Tundra? Let's talk about it. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. My name is Miles, for those of you that are new here, and we are taking a look at this 2023 Toyota Tundra, and this one has a 1794 package on it and a TRD off-road package. Now, I have already done a thorough walkthrough of this truck. If you wanna see that, I'll put the link down below in the description of this video for you to find that. So you can go check that out because this one's not going to be so much of a tour. It's really going to be talking about where I just went a little over 3,500 miles with this truck. And I'm going to talk about the things that I have certainly found that I love about this truck and can confirm that I love about this truck. And I've also found some things that I really do not like about this truck and can confirm that I do not like about this truck. In the previous video I made, I made a lot of speculation on what I may like and not like. And some of these things have been confirmed. Some of them were missed and were just completely not true. And some of the things that I've discovered were not even mentioned in that previous video. So we're gonna get into all of that. And we're gonna start up front on the outside of the truck, work our way back to the outside of the truck, and then we're gonna go inside. Starting with up front, I still can confirm this is not my favorite grill that I have ever seen on a truck. Um, between the grill and the headlights, definitely not the best looking truck out there. And I think when I compare it to some other options out there in the market, there are some other front ends of trucks that I think just look a lot more appealing than this truck here does. I don't think this is the worst one out there either by any means, but I think there's other better options out there. Another thing that I really feel like I need to upgrade, this does have 20 inch TRD blacked out wheels there with just the red TRD logo, but I feel like the tires that are on here just are too small. Like these tires just do not look great on this truck. I will say it is a very smooth and comfortable ride with these tires, but gosh, it just does not have that real good, aggressive truck look when you're looking at the outside of this truck. And I think a lot of that has to do with the tires. Now, the powertrain on here has been great. This does have the iForce Max here. So what I have found is it is most fun to drive this truck without a doubt when it is in sport mode. So you have eco mode, normal mode, and sport mode. It is definitely the most fun to drive in sport mode, but Toyota does something really strange that I just do not understand. And that is that if you are driving in sport mode and you turn the truck off, when you go to turn it back on, it will no longer be in sport mode. It'll be in the normal drive mode. So you actually have to change it back to sport mode every time if you want it to be in that mode, which like I said, is just the most fun way to drive this truck. It's a little less fuel efficient, but not that crazy where it's the small enough difference that I would prefer to just drive it in sport mode most of the time. So I don't like that it just switches back to normal mode automatically when I didn't tell it to do that. Um, now, a lot of y'all know that I talked about how I wanted a white truck and I wasn't a fan of the Chrome. Both of those things have kind of changed and the reason I am starting to like the black truck more is because I feel like this looks really good on camera. I think it looks better on camera than white trucks do and I'm starting to really like the way that it looks in video content with RVs in it and I'm glad that I went with this choice. And the chrome is also growing on me because I've seen these exact same Tundras out there that are blacked out and I think this looks far better than those. So part of me was thinking to delete some of the chrome and I am definitely not going to be doing that because I really think that it looks a lot better with the chrome than it does when it's fully blacked out. So those are two things that have grown on me. I still really like the way they cut the lines in the body here. I think it looks really nice and something that is just so hard to see on camera is this paint actually has like blue, green and purple sparkle to it and it looks really cool when you get up close. There is a lot of detail in this black paint that I really like. Now, another thing here that I actually didn't think would be that practical, and I have found it to be extremely practical, is this button here to drop the tailgate. I have actually used that at least probably three to five times already and been in instances where my hands were full, needed to open the tailgate. The only thing that is really bizarre to me that just is really annoying is there's no button on this side. So why they didn't do buttons on both sides of the truck, I do not understand because there have been many times where I've been walking around this way and I go to hit the button there and I'm like, oh shoot, it's not actually there. And then I have to come back around to this side and hit the button over here. So that has been a really annoying thing that it's like, why not just have buttons on both sides? But nonetheless, it is a useful tool. It just doesn't make sense why it's not on both sides. 
Next thing is, this is a five and a half foot bed. And if I could go and do it all over again, I would definitely go with the six and a half foot bed option. You can see I have my generator in here and I have the bed extender in here. And already, I mean, this trunk is, or the bed of the truck is feeling very congested in this space. It's not feeling like there's a whole lot of space to work with and it's kind of annoying. Now, I actually don't leave this bed extender in here because you can see it just takes up so much room. It is nice when you flip it over how you can extend the bed like so, but when you don't have this flipped out and you have the bed, you know, the tailgate up, it's just taking up so much room in the bed of the truck that I do not like to leave that in there. And there's been instances where it would have been nice to have, but it's like I wasn't at the house and the bed extender was in my garage and it was like, I'm, I just don't keep it in the bed of the truck all the time. So six and a half foot bed would have been nice. And if I could go back, I probably would have done that. Even things like I've loaded my motorcycle up in here a couple times already and having the six and a half foot bed would have allowed me to actually close the tailgate. Whereas having the five and a half foot bed, I wasn't able to do that. So it would have been nice to have. Um, that's just about everything on the outside, I believe. I don't think there's a whole lot else. The ride is really smooth and comfortable. I definitely enjoy that. And everything else is gonna be stuff that's on the inside. So let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. As we open the door here, still love the color. The saddle interior color is very nice. I'm a big fan of that. I have not changed my ideas or opinions on that. Um, one thing that is neat, you can see obviously with the uh, um, moonroof open here, how that looks. We're gonna close that up though. I did see online that for the 2024 TRD Pro, tundra they are now going to have a black headliner option now i was really turned off to the trd pro when i saw that it only had a gray headliner because i was really looking at that truck if i was going to go tundra more than any other one because i think the outside aesthetic is just so much cleaner on the trd pro than it is on any other package for the tundra but the gray headliner really really shot that down because i just feel like it just doesn't look as premium when you have a gray headliner so I'm loving that I went with an option that had the black headliner. Although I think if I waited a year later and got was looking at 2024 models, the TRD Pro with the black headliner would have been the winner. Now, one thing that is a definite critique for me, and I'll see how this goes, but this thing right here that kicks this leg extender out, perfect example of it right here. The truck is on and it is just not working. Clicking the button can feel like it's trying to do something, but nothing is happening. And every time I have ever want, not every time, actually, I shouldn't say, but literally 60, 70% of the time I want to use this, like I'm on a long hour plus long drive and I want to kick this out, it doesn't work. And so that's something that's really annoying. I've seen other people complain about this online. So that is something that is definitely a critique and not a huge fan of when maybe they could have just done a manual pull out sort of, you know, design there or something like that. But that is one of the critiques that I have in that regard. As we come inside, I still love the way it feels in here, the view that you have out the windshield, it's just phenomenal. And then some people were saying the screen is too big and it's gonna block your view. You will have to be extremely short for this to block your view. You can see the camera is at my eye level right now and this seat is as low as it goes. I'm 6'2", so yes, I'm rather tall, but also keep in mind if you're shorter, you can raise the seat up. And the screen's not even close to blocking my view of anything. So that has never been something that has been a concern, never something that I've experienced. And I love this big display. It is definitely a statement and I have no problem with the screen being that big and even extending over this area here. I will say though, I oftentimes forget that there is storage up here that I could utilize. Great place to put like your key fob and things like that. And a lot of times I just flat out forget it's there because I can't see it. Now, another thing in here that I wanna talk about is the sound system, because I did just discover, and I don't know how many you know, modern vehicles have this feature, I would guess probably quite a few, but the vehicle I was driving before this was a 2020 Tacoma that definitely didn't have this that I recall, and that is a surround sound audio system. So it's a JBL audio system with a ton of speakers in here, and I actually turned the surround sound on and off just to see what it did, and man, it is such a cool audio experience when you have that surround sound on. It basically takes the vocals of the song, puts them right in the middle of the vehicle. So it sounds really nice and rich and full of sound. And then if you turn it off, it kind of sounds more just like you're getting blasted from both sides with every bit of the music. 
So the surround sound is really, really premium. It makes the audio sound so much better, and I really like that. As we keep moving around, one thing that I did notice was you have the digital mirror, which is absolutely awesome because this really eliminates a lot of blind spot issues when you are able to use this. You get such a wider range of view with the camera versus like just your normal mirror because all the obstructions that you see in your normal mirror, like the headrest of the seat behind you and the columns here on the side, like all that's gone when you're using the digital camera for your mirror. However, like I said, I've had my motorcycle in the bed of the truck a few times and that actually blocks the camera. And when you don't have use of this camera, I realized your blind spots are pretty bad in here. Like look at how thick that column is there and then the headrest is right where your view going out of the back window is. So you have a massive blind spot. The mirrors are pretty big and you could get like towing mirrors as well, which I don't have, which would help with this, but it is a pretty big blind spot when you don't have use of that digital mirror. But when you are using the digital mirror, it is fantastic. It gives you a much wider range of view than just using the standard mirror. So I do like that. Now, the rest of the complaints that I have are going to be in the back of the truck. So let's hop out and go into the back. And these are things I absolutely have found that are just really just gut-wrenching to have to live with. And one of them is not having a flat floor. So you have that huge lip there. That's because components from the battery are running up to the engine compartments through that spot there. And underneath the seats, no storage here which just really sucks. This is where your battery is at for the hybrid system. So you can see here, I have some of my camera equipment in this bag and my tripod. This stuff would be stored under the seat if there was storage there and out of the way, out of sight. Can't do that because there's just literally no place to store this stuff. And so the storage in the back really is not great. Even when you go like behind the seats, because of the JBL sound system, they put a subwoofer in here, which is awesome. I mean, I love that but your storage space is just so limited. I mean, I pretty much have already maxed out this space and I just have like bare cleaning, like bare essentials, like cleaning supplies, jumper cables, a little toolbox, and that's it. And even like the back of my seats, I've had to stuff a bunch of stuff in here to kind of get it out of the way as well, just miscellaneous stuff that I had in my truck. And so there's just really no good way to store things just out of sight in this back area of the truck. So I'm not a huge fan of that. That is something that is really disappointing that I really, figured I'd be disappointed with and can without a doubt confirm is disappointing. And then the next thing, I actually have to set the camera up here to really show you what this is. In this back seat, because you have this moonroof here, which I love, I really wanted the moonroof and I still love having the moonroof. All in all, I probably could live without it if I knew I was gonna be carrying a lot of people in the backseat of the truck. Luckily, I'm not, so I don't have to worry about it too much. But if I'm sitting up perfectly straight being 6'2", okay, the top of my hat is barely brushing the ceiling, but if I lean forward just a little bit, my head hits this lip that's right here. I'm guessing the mechanics for how this rolls back into this area is in this column right here. So it has to dip down lower than what the height of the backseat is right here. So the ceiling height dips down lower right here, making it, if you're over like 6'1", you're just gonna be bumping your head into that, which is really annoying. And then if I move to the middle seat, I literally don't even fit. Like couldn't even sit here. You'd probably have to be like five foot 10 or shorter to fit in the middle seat. So it's a little bit claustrophobic back here because of the ceiling height. There are definitely a lot better clearances in other trucks in the back seat. So that is something that I'm not a huge fan of there as well. Luckily for me, I really won't ever be sitting back here, but I am cautious of that for other people that I may put in the back seat of this vehicle. So that's everything here. Then there's a few other things I wanna talk about. One, and I'm not gonna demonstrate this, but just take my word on it. If you do not put your seatbelt on, Toyota is absolutely crazy with just how much they're going to just go off on you to make you put your seatbelt on. And actually, no, I, it, you have to sit there for like two minutes, it feels like, for anything to change and for it to actually go and turn off. That beeping that is just so annoying. And the reason this is so annoying is because it does it for the passenger as well. And I don't know how to turn it off other than getting like a third market accessory that you have to pay monthly for that I just don't want to do. And if I put my dog in the front seat or if I have stuff loaded up in the front seat and it is making that sensor go off, I have to listen to this thing beep for like two minutes going down the road if I forget to buckle the seatbelt before I throw everything in there. 
So that is really annoying. That's something that I definitely have not been liking. And even if it's just me getting in the truck and I'm just moving the truck real quick or just doing like I'm at an RV lot and I'm just driving from RV to RV and I don't want to put my seatbelt on. If they make it feel like you do not have a choice because they are going to annoy the crap out of you until you put your seatbelt on. And that is something that I've not been a fan of. So don't like that. But that's about all my complaints. I don't think I have any other things that I really would complain about. I think if I had it to do over again, or I shouldn't even say to do over again, because I really am happy with this truck. I think it's a great truck. I like this truck. I certainly cannot complain getting to drive around a truck that is this nice every day. I mean, it is a beautiful truck. It's fun to drive. Throw it in sport mode. It has a ton of power, and it's really fun. But I think if someone presented me the opportunity to possibly get rid of this truck and get something else and try something else, I would jump at that opportunity. I don't think I'm like married to this truck by any means and feel like this is the best truck that's ever been built. So not married to it would certainly be open to trying other trucks as well and seeing how they compare and things I like about those and things I wouldn't like about those compared to a model like this. So that's kind of where I'm at so far. Again, we're at 3,500 miles just about on this truck. And also one last thing that I forgot to mention, the fuel economy on here has improved since the last time I did this video. Since that engine kind of got worked in and stuff, I have been able to get it to that like 20 to 22 miles per gallon range when I'm driving on the highway. If it's just like straight highway driving, if I'm doing a little bit more city driving, I'm usually in that like 17 to 20 mile per gallon range, but that has improved since I first got the truck. So that is just about everything. Um, I don't think I missed any talking points that I really wanted to touch on in this video. So let me know what you think and let me know your thoughts on this truck and kind of the things I shared in feedback. If you have a different truck that performs differently in a way that I mentioned, let me know as well. And last thing before I go, down in the description of this video, you can go subscribe to my second YouTube channel, which is our Firmly Unbound YouTube channel where I'm going to start producing content there. So I want you to go subscribe. There's not gonna be any videos up there yet, but they are coming, don't worry. And I'm gonna be talking about what it means to live Firmly Unbound. And we're gonna show more of what living Firmly Unbound looks like through that channel. It's gonna be a lot more fun and interesting content as well as diving into some serious topics in today's world. So go check that out as well. Go subscribe to that channel. I'm really excited about what's coming with that. So go check that out. And until next time, live firmly on Bound.